introduce myself for those who don't know, know me. My name's Steph Stewart. I'm, um, I'm a primary teacher. I have been for 12 years and I was a class teacher for 10 of those years before I made the leap into just concentrating on uh, teaching Spanish as part of the Primary Languages Network. Um, I am basically though a class teacher and, and hopefully um, that will come across tonight because I have been in the position of lots of people out there. I know how busy classroom teachers are and I know how MFL coordination can sometimes be down your list um, because you've got to get your English and maths lessons ready for the next day etc so hopefully we'll be able to go over ways that we can help you with that okay so in addition to my role as an associate teacher with the primary languages network i, I actually go into six different schools and teach spanish um, i am the sales coordinator for the network so i'm your first port of call should you wish to, uh, should you have any queries or want any information about joining us okay so the purpose of our webinar tonight is to show you how we can save you time and um, stress with planning your MFL. Okay, so um, we want to keep the primary and language learning and hopefully we can show you how we can do that tonight. All right, so I'm just going to, hopefully we have been plagued with a couple of gremlins um, with this PowerPoint, but let's keep the, everyone cross your fingers for those gremlins to stay away and we'll make a start, okay? So um, the Primary Languages Network is basically a network of um, schools and we provide assistance to those schools in many different ways. So we work hard to understand the requirements of our schools and that enables us to kind of give them exactly what they need. The fact that there are a team of teachers that work and um, provide um, MFL teaching on behalf of the network means that we are on the ground doing what yourselves are doing. We are, we, we are doing that job day in, day out. And, um, you know, so we absolutely hear what you're saying and we, we come across the same issues and, and, and uh, problems as you do. Um, so that really informs what we do as a network. Um, one thing I would just like to say about our network is it's not just an off the shelf um, resource. We are constantly changing, constantly evolving, and I'll probably allude to that on various occasions tonight. Uh, we do listen to what people are saying and we um, are aware, we keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on out there. And um, we, you know, sort of respond to that. Um, so that will probably, uh, I'll probably mention that a, a few more times. Um, Ways that we, in which we provide support, we offer CPD to staff, we offer the webinars such as the one I'm doing tonight, and one-to-one -one advice which can help give your staff the skills to basically develop um, primary languages within your, within your school. Um, members use our VLE, our virtual learning environment. I didn't really know one of, what one of those was before I, I sort of worked with the network. I actually used, when I was a class teacher and coordinator, um, I actually was a member of the network. So I used the resources in my school and that's how I sort of came to know about them. Um, and that's how I know how good it is because I've used it myself and um and we are as I say we are constantly evolving it and changing it and tweaking it to make sure it, it meets the demands of our users um the VLE is a brilliant tool in that you can access all of the resources there but you can also and this is a really important thing you can also store work that the children have done and we'll look into that in a bit more detail later on um one more thing that we offer is the primary languages development award uh, which is uh, something that we provide that um, you can work towards as a school and there are three different levels of accreditation and it allows schools to evaluate and strengthen and celebrate what you're doing in school a lot of the time when you go um, for an accreditation you will realize and this does happen in one of my schools uh, they've not long received um, the first accreditation with the primary languages development award and we were doing a lot of that in school anyway um but i'm an associate teacher working for the network um it doesn't mean that people um, are excluded from that if they're not an associate teacher or a language specialist if we look down at the pictures we have at the bottom on the right hand side this lady down here is actually a teacher in hope primary school and they are 
class teachers, they have achieved um, the Primary De uh, Languages Development Award without any input from any associate teachers. OK, so it is doable um, as a non-specialist and as a class teacher. Um, just one point before we move on, our annual conference where the, re the remaining two photos were taken last year and you can see they're very active. The second one there, we've got people have got their arms in the air, they're joining in with one of the speakers as they're demonstrating. Um, and the other photo is of our t part of our team of um, Janet's at the front there, um, of our, our team of associate teachers. And uh, um, we are basically we are all um out there as i say doing the job that you're doing and we found the conference is a brilliant place to network and to um hear from inspirational speakers if you are a premium member we'll look at the, mem the different memberships a little bit later on but you get a free place at our annual conference and they are usually 125 pound to non-members so it's really worthwhile looking at the different memberships and bearing that in mind if you're making a choice about which one to, to choose okay right let's move on then um just a little um talk about testimonials and what our school what our network members think about us we have a, a a testimonial here from a lady called Emma Perkins, who was at St. Barnabas Primary School. Emma's now moved to a Halton school, but she's actually taken out a, a membership in a new school because this is what she says about being part of the network. Uh, working with Janet and utilising the VLE is hugely beneficial. As someone who's not a language specialist, there's a massive amount of resources that save time and help to deliver high quality language lessons. Um, I'm not obviously going to death by PowerPoint tonight, but just the fact that she she makes reference to the fact that non-specialists benefit from it. Um, they've fully embedded, um, key, in key stage two, they've fully embedded lan language learning and the support she always mentions, mentions the support she gets from Janet and the rest of us. Um, so, you know, I just think that's, that is testimony to, to what we do. Um, Janet and the rest of the team work really hard to make sure that this is a really good product for you. We're using it every day and we really believe in it. It, it really does the job and takes the stress out of it for teachers. Um, there are many more testimonials here, but I'm not going to um, click into them just at the moment, but you will have access to this PowerPoint later on should you wish to have a little look at what other people say about us. Um, Right, so we, what do we do? We support schools to deliver effective primary age and stage appropriate skill based language learning. So we are looking at the four skills of speaking, reading, listening and writing in, in our languages. Um, and sometimes we say stage appropriate because um, your school might be at the point where they're not all starting, um, they're all starting a new language at the same time I work in a school where they changed from French to Spanish a couple of years ago so um, we implemented the year the sort of the stage one curriculum with them all um, obviously you tweak it to sort of appeal to your year sixes um, and you can get a bit more out of a lot more out of them than year, year threes but basically that's just you know a, a point to make about the fact that it doesn't it, it's stage appropriate not necessarily age appropriate um, we enjoy being language detectives. That's one of the things we encourage our, chill, our pupils to do. We practice our, our language skills and we can use those skills in different languages. So, for example, in, I teach Spanish, but I was telling some year six today. What we do when we look at verbs is we're preparing them for when they get to high school and whatever language they do, they will need to look at verbs and how verbs change in that language. So what we are acquiring is language learning skills, okay? If you're following our scheme of work, that is all taken care of for you. The teacher, the MFL coordinator doesn't have to worry, oh, are we, are we addressing all four skills? All that planning is done for you, okay? So what we're gonna look at now is a snapshot of the VLE okay so you can have a, you can see a little uh, snapshot of it here but I'm going to take you through in a moment and, and give you a little tour um, it is a virtual learning environment which has more than 5,000 resources and links to different activities okay there is also um, there are also some resources for key stage one and our key stage one um, sort of scheme of work is being revamped at the moment and there are some very exciting changes happening again it's the fact that we we never rest on our laurel, laurels we're always trying to improve things um and just make it even better for the end user which is us and the children um 
so the VLE hosts are ready-made French, Spanish and German key stage two schemes of work. We have subject planning and MFL coordinator tools, uh, key stage one um, learning, seasonal specials, cross-curricular lessons and our treasure chest. I'm going to tell you because without seeing them, that doesn't mean much. So let's have a little look. This is where I can show you the good stuff. So if we just have a look at, we'll look at the schemes that work in a moment, um, but if we have a look at the MFL coordinator tools, because as the coordinator, you are the one that's kind of responsible for ensuring that boxes are ticked. And what we've tried to do here is just um, sort of put together um, a lot of resources that will, you may never need, but you may need. So this is basically... Um, ideal for when if you do get a call off Ofsted or you do get have to make a presentation to your governors there's a little folder in here oops there's a little folder in here which will help you to do that okay apologies something's just kicked me out those gremlins don't appear to have gone so we mustn't have all crossed our fingers okay <laughs> right now I'm just going to pop back in so the MFL coordinator tools okay um, so there is a, if we look into it back into that folder, we've got a presentation to governor's PowerPoint. Okay. We've got an overview of focuses that people might say, right, what do you do throughout your, throughout key stage two? What kind of things do you concentrate on? Um, scheme of work content, things that you may never need, but if you do need them, they're there ready and waiting for you. Report packs. So here we've got sample report comments for your different year groups. Now, I don't really know of any other MFL sort of resource provider that's, that's given you access to things, such a, a wide range of things as this. Obviously, Word Online, my, my, uh, my internet can be a bit slow at times, but let's have a little look. Come on, get those fingers crossed. Every, there you go. Okay, so comments that you might want to use for your year three or your stage one learners. So we've got a, a variety of comments you might want to use. Okay. So that is the kind of thing that who's got really got the time to sit and go, right. Okay. I'm going to make up a load of comments for my year MFL reports. You're so busy with your English and maths comments. Okay. So this is where we can step in and really help you out. Sample school policies. We've got snapshots of lessons from other, from, from other people that have done them. Scheme of work documentation. So just lots of things in there that um, will just help you to do your job, okay? Because you've got so much other stuff to think about, it's done for you. So let's have a little look at what else we offer. Um, user files. Now, I will allude to this a little bit later on as well, but the user files are brilliant because they are storage and they're completely secure, okay? So your, only people, only you at your school will have access to these, okay? Um, we have... You can rename and make as many different folders as you like, but you might want to just pop something in your year three folder. This could be your resources and you think, yeah, your year three teachers might think, Do you know what, I'm going to download anything I need. We can also clipboard things. We have a clipboard facility. So if you found a resource elsewhere on the VLE, you can simply um, click on uh, the little three dots next to it, which I, I might be able to show you in a moment. Clipboard it. To the uh, paste it to the clipboard and then you can um unclip it in wherever you want it okay so that's that's a brilliant feature where you can just think right i want all of my resources in one place i'm going to stick them in my year three folder for next year the other thing you can also save into the vle into the secure files in the vle are samples of the children's work and we'll look at that in a bit more detail later but i think that's a real that that's just something that's invaluable because as the coordinator or the head um you might be able to say do you know i just want to have a little look at if we've got offsted looming or i just want to get make sure everything's there you can have a little look in your year three file and think brilliant we've got some example of year three work there year four year five year six all done key stage one there's some stuff in there as well so that's a real i find that a real benefit and as i mentioned later on you can actually do that from mobile devices as well if you download the my learning app you can simply do that it's a really simple um a really simple process to do that and it's just in there at the click of a button and it's sorted for you okay so user files are a brilliant tool um let's say subject planning so if we go into our oh sorry wrong one i'm just going to nip back to that one before there if we look 
to the teaching resources file. Okay. Now this is a fantastic little treasure trove of things that you never even knew you needed. Um, we've got our three ready-made schemes of work. And again, we'll look at that a bit in a bit more detail later on. Okay. This is a brilliant folder. It's seasonal specials. Okay. Seasonal specials are lifesavers because we all know throughout the year, you've got those things that pop up and your head will send you an email and say, Oh, can you just sort something for European day of languages? Or can we do something cross curricular with our languages on world book day? This is where you come. We, we keep these things in, um, sort of chronological order. So for example, spring two, where we're coming to the end of now, um, we've just had mother's day okay so you might want to have a little look in the mother's day folder you've got french german and spanish resources okay we created a mother's day poem okay so our mother's day poem which was excuse me which was narrated by our lovely associate irene Okay. El día de la madre. Esta persona es guapa. Esta persona es amable. Okay, so you get the idea. We created a Mother's Day poem and then we had um, a little lesson plan. There we go. A little booklet that the children can make for a special person in their life which has the templates for what and everything you need on there so just a time saver nobody's got to control the internet for spanish or french mother's day ideas they're there for you okay it saved me so much time throughout the years just by thinking i'm just going to have a quick look in the seasonal specials and see what's available okay um well book day we did some work i I chose to do some work on how to train your dragon in one of my schools. So I introduced this. Somebody has taken the time to make the put the film trailers in there in, in the three different languages there. You know, so all that time, all those hours that you spend going, oh, I've got to find a clip for this. It's already done for you. Um, if we have a look at the Spanish very quickly, let's create a dragon. So this is the sheet I used with my um, year four, five and five, six classes. And it was how to train a dragon. We looked at these um, sentences, the things a dragon can do, a dragon can fly, a dragon can run, etc. And the children translated them. And then we did some work. The teacher actually continued this in the next lesson. Um, they created some beautiful drawings and descriptions of their dragons. So what they were called, how old they were, where they lived, that kind of thing. So that was a lovely lesson just taken off the shelf in the seasonal specials section. So it was uh, it, they really are time savers. Um, if we just go back now to the teaching resources file okay so we have the seasonal specials we have the cross curricular file now the cross curricular file we all know nowadays that a lot of people do things in a topical um have a topical approach to learning so if you are doing um a history topic on something in particular we've got history themed lessons okay so we've got aztecs castles for french clothes now and then um victorian toys and games cavemen stone age so there may be something in there that might tie in with something that you need to do in school so again takes a lot of the work out of it for you okay um myths and legends there superheroes lessons uh, we'll look at that just have a quick look quick look at that we've got some one of my colleagues, Robert, who's really creative, did a brilliant webinar. And if you haven't had a chance to see it, um, I would recommend if you look on our events page on our website that you have a little look and uh, and just look at Robert uh, Robert's we uh, webinar on that because it's really good and it gives you loads of great things to do in the autumn term with how to introduce yourself and just types into what the children are interested in. We're always trying to put a bit of magic into our teaching, aren't we? And um, that's often done for you with the resources that are already made and just ready for you to take away. Okay. So that's our cross-curricular 
folder okay um so we've looked at seasonal specials we looked across curricula the treasure chest now janet i'm sure she won't mind me you telling me this she said this is just where i empty my head um and this is anything that might come up um she's kept them here she can't throw anything away i'm a bit like that myself and as a teacher i think we all are we've all got a spare room full of gubbins that once you know one day we may need um just things that might be useful okay so mindfulness and meditation um puppets in language teaching sen and mfl signage in the classroom and songs so just things that may come in useful okay it's always worth a trawl in the treasure chest to see what is in there some things you might be doing an italian day and there might be some italian things you can find in here okay it's always good to have a trawl through janet's mind and you can do so in the um treasure chest one more thing i'm just going to show you um before we move on is link and learn was i think a, a company that we took over i think the lady decided to fold it uh, to, to sort of close it down and we bought her resources offer so this is really handy i'll just show you some french so essential things for your french class and it's display now nobody really has an awful lot of time to create displays and there are here things here for you labels signage for the classroom um days of the week handwriting countdowns weather um it's just a handy little thing another job you don't have to do it's in the link and learn folder um on the teaching resources file on the vle okay um our key stage one scheme of work is also in here as i say it's being revamped at the moment um but that is something that you might be interested in if you teach your little ones in your school which i do in quite a few of mine um right so we're gonna have a little look anything else we want to look at here let me see i think what we'll do we'll go back to the powerpoint and gremlins go away brilliant okay so we've had a little look at the vle Let's carry on and look more in more closely at the lesson plans. So we've got comprehensive half term by half term um, lesson plans. Okay, so it's got built in progression. You don't have to worry that people are, you know, things are getting a bit more complex and a bit more tricky as things gone on. We've already had all those thoughts and Janet has been working on this for years and years and years. So it's really, she's honed it and it's looking absolutely fantastic. She's, poor Janet has been making lots of changes and improvements to it recently through feedback from people like myself and people who are out doing the job and she must think oh Steph's on the phone again or Steph sent me another email because it's a suggestion or somebody else sent a suggestion she thinks could we add this to it I think teachers might really need this so we're out there we're doing the job and hopefully that means that what we put on our VLE reflects what you need out there okay so let's have a little look at the we're looking at the Spanish scheme of work at the moment. So here we have our stages, okay? So they may or may not correlate to your year groups depending on how things work in your school. You might have mixed year groups. You might have everybody starting on the year three curriculum because you start in a new language, okay? But you've got all of your plans or your topics from autumn one to summer two, okay? Um, I'm going to take you down to something that I'm gonna be moving on to in the summer term, uh, summer one, um, in the next few weeks uh, and it's walking through the jungle okay so as you may guess we're looking at jungle animals in this uh, in this unit of work so we think of it as sort of three different levels okay if you are a non-specialist or new to the vle my recommendation and this what this is what i did when um i used the scheme of work initially uh, at my old school i just went to the lesson plans and i just followed them verbatim okay and that's what you can do the work is done for you and you have links in your lesson plans to your resources okay so walking through the jungle lesson one okay our lesson plans all have three activities in now you may find that you get through all of those activities in one lesson or you may find that you have a 10 minute slot that you need to fill and you might just do activity one okay on each of the activities you have your dfe attainment target and your key stage two skill practice level okay so don't worry oh is this is this does this pertain to what i should be doing what objectives and i meet am i meeting because they're all here done for you okay so you have bullet points takes you through step by step on, step on what to do 
okay and let's have a little click through to the files you may need now for the non-specialist these are brilliant even for the specialist to be honest sometimes you think oh am i you know i just want to double check that and you've got la selva una jirafa a beautiful spanish una native speaker serpiente. un loro un mono un tigre okay so absolutely no problem at all with that okay it's done for you you can hear a native speaker say it so it takes the apprehension out of it for the non-specialist because i know i would be um reluctant to have a go if i wasn't sure of what i was doing okay so that definitely means that the work is done for you okay i'm just going to go back in through there okay so going back into our walking through the jungle we've had a look briefly at the lesson plan okay you also have your key spanish phrases over here i'm not going to click on all of the links because you can do that at your leisure um a little bit later on when i I'll, I'll show you um on our website where you can look at some sample lesson plans but basically your resources are there for you this is lovely because it's the jungle and uh, animals powerpoint with audio so if i just have a, a little try of that Una jirafa. okay now our pictures were all drawn by our lovely anna uh, another a native spanish speaker who's a fantastic artist Una serpiente. okay so we've got that done for you there okay it's done and it is let me just check where i put my lesson plan where are you um it's done and you all you need to do is click through okay um we've also janet has been working very hard this year on um consolidation sheets to go with our lessons okay because as a teacher you know that some i mean some schools don't really do much written uh, written stuff evidence for books okay some schools don't have books but most of my schools that i work in do and we want to show off we want to show the children's writing skills so janet's created we've created differentiated um consolidation sheets okay so we've got um sort of a basic one and then a plus sheet as well which is a bit more advanced okay um i'll just get rid of those ones okay so mm -hmm. right i'll show you i think i'll show you another lesson plan because it's got some of the other things that i just want to really show off um we've got some lovely other little native speaker videos now this will just be my um my internet can sometimes be a bit slow but we have uh, videos made which introduce different topics now on the walking through the jungle topic we have our our um our colleague irene who is actually standing um in a jungle and showing us the animals as they appear um and it's a really nice way to introduce them and i always think the children are amazed when they see a real life spanish or french speaker on the computer because whilst you might be they might be listening to them on the sound uh, clips you might be doing your best to you know do your your best spanish or french uh, pronunciation and accents but when they see someone and they look spanish or they look french i just think they love it and it just brings it to life for them um i'll just show you that it's esirene and it's our native speaker video Hola, es Irene. ¿Estáis bien? Hoy vamos a aprender los animales de la jungla. Vamos a caminar por la jungla. ¿Qué puedes ver y oír? Escuchad, mirad. Es un león. Now you can't beat that for brilliant um drama as well. And the children just really enjoy it. It's just a really nice um activity to introduce those um those animals and it's a native speaker doing it. Okay. Um another thing, you know, other things we have here are our transcript 
with the native speaker clip. So as a, as a non-specialist, you can definitely find out what's going on. Um, you've got some PowerPoint games. So on here, Janet's worked really hard this year to create games that you can play either as a class um, or other games that are table games that you can play with groups um, of children, uh, maybe with cards that you might give out. Uh, but this one, I think, is the um, is an identification one, which is on a PowerPoint. Just waiting for it to boot up. So the children really enjoy playing these. Sometimes you have to get a couple of volunteers up and they're kind of like pointing to, and depending on what board you've got, they can maybe splat the board, etc. I've got a couple of fly swats, which are really good for that. Um, so these games have really, they've really brought, brought the acti sort of the lessons to life because the activities really, let me just see. Oh, I'm having trouble moving that on. Right, okay. Sorry about that one. I will, um, I'll, I'll see if I can, uh, let me just have a little look. Right, I'll see if I can, there's anything else I can show you on here. Okay. This is one of my favourite things that I teach all year. La Selva. So it is a story. We've got a few of these dotted throughout our scheme of work. We've got stories based on um, the vocab that we've learned. So this is, again, illustrated by our lovely Anna, uh, a walking through the jungle, lovely repetitive story, which concentrates on introducing adjectives that describe the animals. Okay. So you're walking through the, through the jungle and you've got your... Selva. Lovely, slow and clear pronunciation from our native speaker there. Okay, the children need to guess which animal we're referring to with these two adjectives. So alta y naranja. So obviously you were tall and orange and oh, una jirafa es. And the children love this. Okay, and it's lovely and repetitive. So it asks the same question again. A couple more adjectives and that this time. Una serpiente. Okay. So they are a really nice um, way to consolidate what you've learned and to push the learning on because we're introducing our adjectives then. And then ideally you want to be moving on, moving on to um, maybe some writing after you've done that, okay? Um, so if we just come out of here and just go to the writing, okay? We have a sheet that links in beautifully with that piece of, uh, with that new piece of work we've done, okay? So we've got a color one, Oh, and a black and white one because we know how head teachers feel about printing out in colour. And also the children might like to, uh, you know, do their own thing on there. So down at the bottom, we've got, it says at the top, you're walking through the jungle. What do you see? You're going to draw a picture and then write about each animal. And down at the bottom, we've got a word box. So what can you see? Uh, una jirafa. And then you can use adjectives to describe it. Okay. So the chill, I've done that a few times with classes and they've really enjoyed doing that. And later on, I'm going to show you a little clip of how that can be brought to life using an app. Okay. So that is, we've looked basically at the basic lesson points, uh, lesson plans. Okay. If we look now and now at our next level of learning, okay, you could just stick to your basic lesson plans. Okay. And I would recommend, you know, as you're starting out, it's basically a putting one foot in front of the other kind of job, okay? But as you do, um, you know, you might want to do some consolidation activity sheets. As you do move through, though, you might want to explore some songs. So we've got links on here to different songs, okay? We've got some different stories, okay? So we've got Elma the Elephant, yeah, in Spanish. So links have already been found for you. Don't, haven't got to spend hours on the internet looking for something appropriate. It's already there for you, okay? Um, the right, as far as the writing is concerned, I've just shown you an example of that um, the, in the jungle worksheet. Janet also did some work on the talk and write based on um, Pi Corbett's things, okay, which you may have heard of, of him from your English uh, planning. Okay, so there's always something else to do. There's always something exciting to do. Okay, um, enhanced learning. I love this down here because it gives you example of examples of what people are doing in other schools, and sometimes that's what you need. You're so busy as a teacher, you haven't got time to think. Right, I'm going to reinvent the wheel and come up with my own idea. Let's have a little look. So we've got some pictures of 
another school. Okay, and an elephant is orange and small. No, an elephant is gray and tall. Okay, so that's lovely. It's been created by another school. You might think, you know what, I'm going to pinch that and use it myself, or I'm going to adapt it and do it slightly differently. But I just think, um, let me see. Oh, I think I've got the, I think this is the example I was going to show you later on. But it's, I love this. On Kingsley is Rapido. On Elefante is Greece. On Loro is Grande. How cool is that? I always think it sounds like Miranda. Um, but just lovely to see some examples of what's going on in other schools. Okay, so we've got parrots, multicolored parrots and cheeky monkeys. Okay, so it's nice to see, you know, what other children are doing and, and taking those examples and maybe thinking, no, I'm going to do that in our school. I think we can do that, but even better. Yeah. Um, so there are three basic levels of, of or three levels of, You've got your basic lesson plans, your follow up, explore and assess. And we'll look at assessment in a more detail in a moment. And then enhanced learning ideas of how you can do things, apps you can use, visual display. So we've got some phrase cards, um, which you can use in this particular topic. Me gusta, no me gusta. I like tigers, I don't like tigers. Okay. Creative alternatives as well down here. You might want to have a look at some of them, some tooth fairy activities you know just other things that you might think you know what i need to do something different we're doing a topic on this are there any activities on that for your non-specialists and your specialists um your key phrases with audio are available ¿Cuántos años tienes? okay so basically all of your key phrases for that half term are supported with audio files so you know exactly how things are pronounced okay so that's an absolute lifesaver when you're not feeling confident in delivering things okay right so if we just pop back to here we've looked through the lesson plans and we've looked through the ready-made um scheme of work okay um our lesson plans obviously as i've mentioned they have got built-in progression so we've got from year three to year six a lesson plan like that for every lesson you do um language learning skills cut core four skills of languages revisiting of that core vocabulary it's often a cyclical thing so we cover fruit in year three but we also revisit fruit in year five but we're taking it that step further because we're writing a recipe a fruit salad recipe in year five so things are revisited uh, your basic questions which i call your non-negotiables the your, your name i should say my name is my my i am this i am this many years old where i live all of that is revisited um, you know, we can we can come back to that. We can keep those plates spinning as we go through. OK, development of phoneme grapheme transfer, sentence structure, all of that is taken care of. OK, and you have your DFE attainment targets and skill level objectives uh, in each lesson. OK, um, pop that onto full screen. Otherwise, Peter will be telling me off. Um, Things you might that I might have already covered, but things that you will expect to see throughout our scheme of work are PowerPoints and follow up uh, table or pair games. OK, PowerPoints and class games. OK, uh, this one's about the, the, the alien's house. The alien you will see is a motif that comes up throughout our scheme of work. And it's it's kind of our real stamp on it's it's our little alien family so we we introduce it um when we introduce um faces uh face parts of your face parts of your body um and they it comes up throughout the other year groups okay so we have different stories about them going to uh, to outer space and going on on journeys and going to school and going to the olympics so you'll see the alien family a lot okay Phonics with audio activities. So we've got little PowerPoints over here with built-in audio files, which will help with the, the children developing their phonics. As I've shown you, the um, Essirene style um, videos where we've got that green screen thing going on with jungles, etc., in the background. We have rhymes, songs and poems. We've got a lovely singer on our staff. Well, a few lovely singers on our staff. And uh, lots of files uh, created by our lovely singer, Joanne. Um, that's the thing that I always think as a teacher, when I went on an MFL training course or any training course and they mentioned a song, I think that's lovely. 
But I, when I get back to class, I know I won't remember the tune. Well, we've got files. The files are there for you. So if you're not a confident singer, you can just listen to Joanne say it, uh, sing it beautifully. Okay. Um, and the transcripts are there as well. Video and audio stories with teacher support. Um, the one with the cobwebs on is a, a haunted house one based on the rooms in a house that we do in year five, uh, sorry, year six. And um, I've done a couple of uh, years, I've done like a little flap book, which is based on that. And the children's write, children write their own version of a haunted house story. Um, the writing sheets, I showed you the example of the jungle writing sheet. And that's another example of the robot programming a robot to do different actions. So there are writing sheets to really develop the, that, that other skill of writing and consolidation sheets um, for lots of our activities now, which just are evidencing that the children have covered this they can do this and we often have little uh, opportunities for them to extend their work by using dictionaries etc okay so and there is much much more as i say we are not a static scheme of work we are constantly evolving and things are being added to um an example of that is last summer you might remember the song despacito by justin bieber well, one of our very talented colleagues, Kate, created an ice cream ordering song using that as a karaoke backing track. And I remember teaching that in quite a tough year five, six class and with one of our toughest pupils in that school who was stood at the front and was, he, we, we videoed him, we recorded him singing this song and he went, really went for it. And that is really quite a challenging child who was just transfixed because it was of the moment, because it was popular. All the children, as soon as I put the clip on, sang the songs, sang the, the words anyway. And he, and he refers to that now. And in, in quite a few different schools, the children will say, oh, miss, remember that ice cream song? And they can sing that song to me. And it's nearly a year later. So we are, we like to keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on. And, you know, um, we act on it and we, we, we bring that little bit of magic to our classroom by doing what the children are interested in. Okay. This is what I spoke about before, the keeping a record of children's spoken work. Um, I'll show you a couple of little examples of this with Chatterpix here. Just sweet, green, egg roll. Okay, so a nice little example there. Oh, got lots and lots of things open here now. I do apologise. Okay, um, and we've got this is lovely. Our uh, going to the beach. Well, it's an advert for coming to the beach. How cool is that? So just really, really lovely um, examples that can just be uploaded directly into your user files. They're safe, they're secure, and they're for you um, and your children um, to celebrate what you've done. Um, moving on, let's have a little look. We've got another little Chatterpix one there. Je m'appelle Pouf, j'habite à Maz. J'aime la pomme, j'ai un chat, j'ai la peau rose, je suis petit, je suis timide, au revoir. How cool is that? So just the children love, obviously love doing anything to do with technology. And, um, you know, it's, sometimes you think, oh, I've got to now download that, I've got to put that, I've, where am I going to save it? What folder can I put it in on the school drive? Well, you can, ha you can put it straight into our VLE. OK, as I say, if you download the My Learning app and there's a little picture of it here, um, you can basically it just gives you a direct access to put things straight from your device into into your file. OK, um, so that is some audio stuff. Obviously, you can keep all the stuff as well. Photos. Got a few examples here of some writing. That was some months wheels we created in year three. Um, this is our alien family work in year four on members of the family some verb conjugation up in year six, um, a little activity, photo activity of um, masculine and feminine nouns. That's Robert again with his fantastic creativity. People limboing under whether it's una or una um, to identify noun, gender. Um, so obviously photos can just be downloaded straight into your, v into your user files as well on the VLE. Let's have a little look now at planning, tracking and assessment, okay? Um, obviously, it depends what your school require, and it, 
you know some schools have their own way of doing things i used to use something called classroom monitor in my old school and mfl was just another one of the subjects covered on there and we did, used to do it that way but i also used to dip in and out of um the the primary languages network assessment as well one of the lovely things is that you don't have to use it all but if you want to use it it's there for you okay so we've got medium term plans um okay we've got medium term plans for let me see that's year four i think so you've got your plan for that for for the year okay what you're going to be doing in each year in each um in each term okay i'm just going to move this down here and then we also have um a long-term plan okay so this is a bit more in depth and you've got what you're doing we've got the content the phonics the grammar and the skill levels covered okay so that's a bit more in depth and tells you exactly what you're doing in each of those areas and at the bottom we've got our dfe um attainment targets and skills levels down at the bottom okay um this is something that i use in a lot of my schools and um it's really handy we tend to stick them in the front or the back of the children's books and if the children take the books up to the next year group, it's great for showing progression. Um, so the children, basically, it's an AFL method, really. The children can shade in or tick the clouds that they've, um, of the things that they've covered, okay? And it's lovely sometimes to just look and celebrate, right? Can you do that? The children initially might think, oh, I don't think I can do that. And then you think, no, when we did this, this is what we were doing. When in that lesson, when we learned to do this, when we learned to identify and draw those four face parts, we can now shade that in. So it's a really nice way for them to celebrate what they've done and look at what they're doing next as well, the next steps. And also for the teacher to go, right, where are we up to? This is what I need to move on to. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pop that there. Okay. Another thing that we offer are marking code sheets. Now, this may seem really simple, but it's handy if you want to give this to all of your staff so you all are singing from the same hymn sheet. You've got your marking code. So we've got this in French as well. Um, so you're, you've met the learning objective, yeah? And different permutations for that, next steps, spelling, etc. okay? Another tracking sheet that teachers find really helpful. Now, remember, you don't have to use all of these. Don't be overwhelmed by all of these different things I'm showing you. You just pick yourself up and think, pick, pick it up and think, do I need to use this? Will this help me in my school? And if it does, then brilliant. That makes what we do worthwhile, really. Um, this tracking sheet that I'm going to show you now has um, not only the topics that have been covered, but the phonics that might have been covered, the grammar that might have been covered in that term, and also um, the DFE attainment targets are on there too. It also mentions the puzzle it out, and we'll move on to that in a moment. There are little, little assessments that we provide that you might want to dip in and out of, um, and I'll take you through them in a bit more detail in a moment. Okay, so this tracking sheet covers what we do so you can highlight as it's covered okay also handy if you have a change of staff midway through the year if you're highlighted up to date then you'll know exactly where you're up to phonics tracker grammar tracker so the things you've covered the phonics you've covered in that particular year group in that half term the puzzle it out sheets have you covered have you done a, a listening and speaking puzzle it out i always find that you don't probably get to do all four i can't dedicate a whole lesson really to assessments every half term so i might want to do my listening and speaking in one half term and then my reading and writing in the next half term um but these are really handy to go right okay i've covered those two skills this is what i need to cover next time um and we've got some date um datable uh, sheets to say right okay this is when that was covered um so you, it's a really handy thing you can say right this is what i need to get some evidence for this particular skill i'm going to look at this okay yes we're still here okay and let's have a little look now at the puzzle it out now janet's been working really hard on updating these and she's made a lovely job of it so they're, they're lovely you can just pick them up and use them so we've got our listening um activity here 
and or write our speaking activity here. As I say, I only, only tend to do two every half term. I just don't have time to do all four of my skill assessments in each half term. So they need to do a listening activity um, and the listening transcript is shown to you a little bit later on on a different slide. And then a speaking activity. Okay, reading and writing is there as well. This is how to use it, step-by-step -step instructions. That's what we're covering. And this is um, how you do it. Okay. You've got your listening transcript. This is what you need to say. And you've got your sound file with your uh, native speaker should you require it. Speaking, writing and reading. All your examples are there for you. Okay. So the puzzle outs are brilliant because your assessment is simply done for you. All you need to do is pick it up and say, I'm going to do me listening and uh, speaking today. Um, and use it as you, as you need to. Okay. So let's move in our, let's move on now. So our additional network support includes webinars and staff CPD. We've got our lovely Catherine over here, who is our network coordinator, who can provide a one-to-one -one webinar with yourself should you choose uh, to join us. And it's your getting started webinar and certain memberships as well. You get a follow-up webinar um, where she sort of talks through your progress, how things are going and should you have any particular queries, she'll address them with you. Now, we didn't actually look at this on the VLE because we've done a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but we do have a week-by-week -week network blog. Now, that is sometimes updated depending on how busy we are. It can be updated every day. Um, and it's a lot of the time, it's topical things that have come up. Um, for example, at the moment, this says French April Fool's Day PE activities. So this is pertinent to what's happening now. We're coming up to the 1st of um, April. Um, and, you know, just have a little look. We've got seasonal specials for Easter. So if you click on that link, that there's often a link through to some resources that can help you out with what's happening at the moment. Obviously, we provide webinars like the one we're having now. Okay. Um, I mentioned Robert's Superhero webinar back in October, and that was fantastic. If you haven't had a look at it, have a look at it, um, because it's got some brilliant ideas of how to um, how to just zhuzh up your, um, you know, some quite basic things. But he's got a lovely, there's a lovely superhero slant on it, so you can really, it really brings it to life, and the children just love it. Um, We've got tracking and assessment webinars um, recorded there. Janet did one on, on the 31st of January. Um, Dragons and unicorns, another very uh, hot topic at the moment. You will obviously know about the unicorn frenzy that's hit our schools with all the rubbers and headbands and all of the unicorn things you see around school. And Robert decided to tap into that and he created a scheme, like a, a scheme of work on dragons and unicorns with a lot of description, which can be used in all throughout all key stage two. Obviously, it becomes more progressive as you get to year five and six and you can get lots more um, out of that, um, out of the, the children with description, et cetera, as they, as they move on. But it's a lovely, lovely webinar. So have a, a look at that if you get a moment. Again, we've got active and creative language learning through story from Janet. Okay, so just lovely ideas for how to use story to um, enhance your learning and um, your teaching. We provide uh, Twilights and CP staff CPD. Myself and another colleague uh, went to uh, do a cluster meeting in SCEM last week where we provided some CPD for uh, Spanish and French teaching. Um, Another webinar recently by another colleague, Michelle, who is very computer savvy. So she was working on showing, sharing how to use apps to enhance learning. OK, so lots of stuff. We are not just a static resource. We provide lots of different support and um, a lot of it, you know, you can you can actually find on um, our website. And we also have a few videos on YouTube as well. OK, if you uh, if you look for primary languages network. Um, we're just going to have a little look at uh, uh, new resources that have just come up. We listen, as I say, we listen to our member suggestions and these are new resources in the spring term, uh, which we've, which we've uh, added. So it's just worth a little look to see what we've added just within a heart, within this term.
Right, so yeah, just a snapshot of what we've um, what we've added within the last half term, really. So just, it's an amazing thing to think that this is, we've moved, so we've created so much during this year. Um, and that's really down to the fact that we are um, always listening to our members and, and changing for the better, okay? Um, nearly at the end now so i'm just going to mention before we finish membership options so we've got our premium school scheme of work and teacher memberships okay we've got an offer on at the moment which means that there are 33 percent of the 33 percent discount on all memberships uh, which will take you if you join now you will get membership up till june uh, 19 okay um so which is a real bargain especially if you're considering the premium membership um which is £275, so that will be for 15 months. Um, and you get, as I say, the free delegate place at our languages conference. Um, so obviously this will be available to you to have a look at at your own, at your own leisure, um, and the links will work if you click through. Um, after if you if you want to have a little look in a bit more detail then um but it's definitely worth thinking about a free delegate place at the primary languages conference because i just think you get so much out of the day um last year was so inspirational dan uh, a few of the members uh, a few of the, the speakers would you know um just gave you concrete ideas of things to come away with and use which is as a teacher when you've given up a precious day of your week to come to a conference i think that's what you need you need people that will just inspire you to go right try this in your classroom you can do it and that's definitely what we came away with last year um if anyone's got any questions this is the time to unmute and ask so um if anybody wants to ask a question now that's great if you feel like you just want to drop me an email that's fine okay my email is down here at the bottom and if you want to join uh, the language primary languages network you can join straight join through the website okay we can either invoice the school you can fill in an order form and invoice your school or you can pay online okay any other queries just don't hesitate to uh, to drop me an email i hope you've enjoyed what i've shown you tonight um and hopefully um, you can come and join us and be part of this dynamic community that is our network. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Speak soon. Bye-bye.